Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about Data Wrangler, what it is, who should use it, an example of it, and uh, explaining different parts of it. Let's go through it. To understand Data Wrangler, let's first talk about uh, Fabric. So Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end, uh, data analytics uh, software as a service offering by Microsoft, announced at Build uh, um, recently. It includes different workloads for, um, for the data enge engineering, for data science, for business intelligence, um, and it, uh, each workload uh, contains some objects. Uh, I explained about Fabric and some of its objects uh, in other videos, so make sure to go and check it out. Uh, in this video specifically, I want to talk about a specific object. Um, it's not an object, actually. It's a, a tool or editor called Data Wrangler. So first, talk about what is Data Wrangler and uh, how it can be used. So uh, Data Wrangler is a... Um, is a tool, it's an editor, it's an environment for data scientists to uh, play with the data, to prepare the data, to clean the data, and um, either use the result immediately right there, or uh, generate a Python code that can then be used uh, later on as part of a process in a scheduled basis, uh, get the data, process it, load it in a Parquet file format, and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to show you how this works in a second. So to uh, to get um, this working, first, of course, you need to enable Fabric, which I explained in another video. Once you have Fabric enabled, uh, then you can go here and choose different workloads. Now, um, to go to the Data Wrangler experience, there are different ways, but I'll show you that from the lake house. Lake house is an object which uh, can include structured and non-structured files. So I have a lake house already in my workspace, which I'm going to uh, look at my workspace. So in this workspace, I have uh, some uh, lake houses already. One of them is this, uh, this lake house. So I can go to that lake house and that gives me uh, the ability to go and um, see the data, of course. Uh, and also if I have files, I can click on the files, see the files there. Uh, now to load Data Wrangler or to use Data Wrangler, first you need to have your data loaded in Pandas. What is Pandas? Pandas is a um, library in Python, which is specifically for working with data, to getting data from Excel file, CSV file, uh, JSON file, exporting it, even doing some data transformations with it. So it's a most common data library in Python. To load your data in Pandas, there are different ways. One way you can click on, uh, right click on your uh, file and load it in there when you are in the mm, lake house experience. Uh, or another way is that you can start a notebook. In your notebook, you can connect there. So I'll go to uh, notebook and I'll show you this experience from there as well. So let's say I have um, this notebook. Mm, a notebook, I have explained it in another uh, video as well. Go and check it out. Notebook is a um, is a place that you can write codes in different languages like Python and some other languages and it helps you to write languages, uh, write code in different languages and compile it here and see the outcome immediately. So in the notebook here, I have a Lake House Explorer, which in here I can even click on files and it will show me the files here. So one way to load your files into Pandas is just to right click on it here and say load data and choose Pandas. This is going to generate the code to load data in Pandas. Or alternatively, you can just write this piece of code which I have pasted in uh, my blog article. The link to that is down in the description below. So you can either do that and uh, the code is quite simple. First you import Pandas, the importing library, and then use the, this function called read Excel in this case because my data is in Excel. This is the link to that Excel uh, file in my lake house and this is the sheet that I'm going to get data from it. Uh, and this is a sample data I'm uh, looking at. So if I run this, this is going to load data into something called data frame. 
Data frame in pandas is something like a data table, a loaded in memory data table, which then I can uh, run data wrangler on it and see how it works. So after this loads data in there, um, this is going to also show the data at the same time, but showing the data is not the important part for me. Uh, as long as the data is loaded into this DF object, then it is the data that I can work with it. Uh, so as soon as that is done, then I can go to data tab here and say launch data wrangler and um, it is going to show me uh, the list of um, basically uh, data frames that I have in here. I have just one data frame called DF. I'm going to click on it and this is going to launch data wrangler. Data wrangler, if you are coming from Power BI uh, Word, um, is kind of similar to Power Query Editor. Um, so you have this area in the center, which is um, which is uh, the preview of the data, this area in the center. Um, you have this area at the top, which you can apply some uh, changes after you've done the things here, such as, for, for example, saving your final output as a CSV file or extracting the code. Uh, you have a list of operations or transformations on the left hand side, which you can go and choose from. Um, such as, for example, uppercase, lowercase, things like that. You have some data quality and uh, profiling information charts on top of each columns. And you also have more detailed of that in here. And uh, as you apply some different transformations steps, these steps would be accumulated here. Each step has a code that will be showed here. So very similar to Power Query online experience with some differences, of course. Um, so let's go through some of these experiences and see how it works. For example, let's say in this case, I want to go and select a couple of columns. For example, I want to choose English education column. I click on that, hold the control key and yearly income. So I select these two and then I go under a schema and say select columns. Mm, and this automatically have those two columns that I have selected, but I can go and select other columns if I want to. And then I say apply. As you see, this generates the code. This is Python code. So automatically this generates Python code for me. And when I say apply, this step is already added and ready for me to do the next step. For the next step, for example, I can click English education column and say group by and aggregate. So this is going to use English education as a group by. You can, of course, change it if you want to. I would add an aggregation and I say yearly income is the aggregation. Aggregation type, you see I have quite a lot of options here. For example, I can say as an aggregation type, go and choose um, mean. For example, as you see, there are more aggregations options here, which is more statistical compared to what we have uh, in Power Query. As soon as I choose that, you see the result immediately in this area. Uh, and, I, and when I say apply, this will add it as a step here and the outcome of aggregation is visible then. And now I can click on this and say, well, sort it descending so that this also adds another step of sorting it. Um, and I can continue. But this is a very simple example of how this works. You see, this experience is kind of similar to Power Query if you are coming from Power Query world. Uh, the difference is that, however, this generates a Python code. Each of these steps have a Python code. Um, so if you are a data engineer, you don't have to go and search for these codes and write it yourself. This generates that code for you. Now you might want to use that code somewhere in your um, notebook. Um, you might want to schedule it to run overnight, or you just might want this result. If you just want the result, you can sim simply just say save as CSV, so this will generate a CSV file. Or if you want this to be added to your notebook, you can just say add code to the notebook. So this is going to come back to the notebook that we have been in it and we'll add that piece of code in the notebook. Uh, I'll just scroll down a little bit so that you can see how it looks like. So this is that piece of code that is automatically generated. It includes all of the steps that I have. Uh, and the result is written in a data frame called df underscore clean. Uh, it doesn't show it to me, but I can just simply say um, display, like what you have here. Uh, display is the function that basically just displays the output. So I can simply just say display df clean and 
if I run this, not only this runs all of that process, uh, but also it just displays it to me. So this is the outcome. Uh, because this is Python code, I can add some more into it. Like for example, this line of code that I can add and it would uh, not only um, generate the result, but also store it as a parquet file, which I've done that before. And this is the parquet file that I have created before. Then you can just uh, easily look at that parquet file, like what I have done here, right? Uh, so in nutshell, what is this experience? The Data Wrangler is a simple to use environment for data scientists. Uh, it doesn't have as many as transformations that we have in Power Query Online Editor. You might say, what is the difference between Power Query and, uh, and Data Wrangler? Uh, who should use Power Query? Who should use Data Wrangler? Who, uh, what situation I should use this over the other? Is Data Wrangler going to replace Power Query? So lots of questions like that. I'm going to cover that in another um, video later on. But for now, in very short here, these are two separate tools. They are not going to replace each other. Power Query online editor experience is more like uh, is more a um, powerful for data transformation in general as part of your ETL process. It's a tool for data uh, for citizen data analyst versus Data Wrangler is a tool for data engineer. Uh, can prepare the data, can clean the data. It might be just the outcome they need or they, they can just use the Python code generated easily and use it as part of their, um, their bigger process of application, whatever it is. Uh, this generates Python code versus Power Query Online generates uh, M code. So in, in short, it's uh, you might say, well, I can do all of that with Power Query Editor. I would say not everything because there are some um, interesting transformations that would take more time to do in Power Query Editor. Um, mean was a small example of that, but there are some other examples. Another thing is that sometimes you might need to generate that Python code because you want to run it as part of a notebook and this generates that for you. So you don't uh, need to spend time to write that code. This simplifies that process. It's an easy to use tool uh, that generates that code and make the job of a data engineer simpler. This is as simple as that. Um, so that's about Data Wrangler. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the uh, comments below. I would have another video later on about Data Wrangler versus Power Query Editor. Uh, so until that video, stay tuned and stay safe. Bye. Mm -hmm.